I, I want to ask you because you know, again, I think when the last time we spoke on here, I was still skeptical of Julius Randall. Like mm-hmm. that, I believe I was talking about, hey, if he plays well, you know, trade deadline, you can get something for him. I believe I was that guy, and I'm never afraid to admit yeah. when I'm wrong. Yeah, it's rare, but when I am. I will admit it. And I've, I've said it many times publicly. I was one of those people that he was talking about that doubted him. And I'm glad he said, you know, I don't blame it. I don't blame people for doubting me. Yeah. Like it's just the year before, the year before, but now we've seen what he can do and we've seen where he can play. Forget about that last memory you have of Julius mm-hmm. in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. That that's not all on him. Not all mm-hmm. on him. That has a lot of circumstances that led to him just being like, he just was psyched out of that. Right. That, that but I also know he didn't go into the offseason and got my extension, all NBA. I'm good, right? Like, all right, I'm, I can cruise control this now. I'm, yeah. I'm all yeah. set. No, from what I understand, he, like, went, like, double psycho. Like, he he absolutely, yeah. like, you know, zero dark 30. Like, he was just, like, took it to a whole other level where now it's not only just the game and conditioning. Now it's diet mm-hmm. that he threw into it as well. And he, like, apparently looks off the charts, like physically, just off the charts. So that's a good sign. Love that. How much are you buying into him being like that now? Okay, what he was all year, established, reliable, star, all-star level player. Are you buying him as that now for good? Or do you need to see, like, are you still sitting back going, all right, let me, let me see, let me see what he's got. Because I didn't like what I saw in the playoffs. Where are you at with Julius? You know what? I'm buying it, huh? I'm buying it, man. I was with you. I was a Julius doubter. I was ready to send him packing after the first year here. It was, it was a disaster. We called him the Tasmanian Devil, all those things. Uh, and then when they drafted Obi, you know, we figured it, there has to be something there that he's got to be on the, on the way out. But I just feel like something clicked with him. And that he's figured this thing out. He's always gotten better every year of his career. You know, give him credit for that. Even though the first year in New York was a a disaster, statistically, he's always gotten better. But I think last year, things really clicked. I think the relationship with the coaching staff, with with Tibbs, Kenny Payne, with the management, World Wide West, they're all on the same page. Um, His offensive arsenal, I don't think, was a fluke, man. I mean, some of his shots off the bounce, the plays that he was making, I, I, a lot of times I said it, it reminded me of Melo. He's not Melo, but it reminded me of Melo, his offensive repertoire, and I don't think that's something that you can say is a fluke. I think this guy put in the work. He's put in even more this year, as you said. You have people talking about, you know, he, he's so svelte now. He could play the three. I'm like, all right, well, let, let's pump the brakes here. Now they're trying to get him in. They, they're trying to figure out any way to get him and Obi on the court together, but I'm like, let's pump the brakes there. 29% from three last uh, two years ago, 41% this year. Since 2000, this is from Vork of The Athletic, there's only two players that made a bigger jump in their three-point percentage since 2000. That was Joe Johnson and KD. Yeah. Three-point numbers are off the charts. Um, KD's rookie year to his second year, right? Right. When, when, like, like, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, rookie year, yeah. the, the efficiency from the baseline led the league. I just think his arsenal is crazy. But this year, he has help. He has a little bit more help, right? Not superstar caliber, but capable players. I thought the Knicks really emphasized bringing in more shot creators to help Julius Randle and take the pressure off of him. Because the Hawks series was one where we got exposed in that. We, we didn't have enough outside of Randle and Rose to really be reliable shot creators now they bring in Kemba okay we'll see what how the knee holds up you bring in Fournier a guy who's more capable of putting it on the floor than than a Bullock and can also facilitate I think RJ year three is going to be going to take another step to help Julius Randle now you bring in Burks Rose IQ that tandem off the bench so I think everyone together is going to grow, but overall, I think Randall has a lot more help. So I'm, I'm buying it, man. I don't think he's going to rest on his laurels and say, well, I got the contract, I can rest. I think the failures in the playoffs is going to be another motivating factor for him to be great with us this year. I think you're 100% right. The, the additional guys that can create for themselves that aren't just catch-and-shoot types, you can't – like, what did we learn about Julius during the year – you can't, you can't play him one on one. 
he 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 basically will win his matchup one on one. Yeah, almost almost against it, almost anyone. You got to double him now, mm-hmm. and he struggles right when the double comes. That's when he struggles. We understand that. Like, and you talk about the Tasmanian double. I mean, he does get himself into that move and then realizes here comes the double. I got to make a pass, but it's a blind pass. Like, but when he's one on one. He's reached that level of I can beat anybody one right. on one, and that's special. So having someone else that you got to guard, yeah, floor spacing will be a lot better. Again, worry about the defensive end. We can we can get to that, but that's up to the head coach to make sure that's not an issue. I am I am also I'm also buying him. I'm buying Julius mm-hmm. as as the you know the Knicks star. I'm not buying, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to make him like oh he's going to be a top ten player, a top fifteen player. No, mm-hmm. I, I know where he's at. But it doesn't mean you still can't be a really competitive team led by a guy who can get you 2010 on a given night, 2010-5 on a given night, knowing how well he's taking care of his body, mm-hmm. knowing mm-hmm. where he is at peace and with his mind, how comfortable he became at the Garden. Uh, all those things, I think, were important for him last year, yeah. carrying yeah. into this year. There's, no, there's not going to be any new experience. This idea that there's higher expectations on him is insane. No, not higher. Just do that again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Like I'm gonna call this one my uh, official apology. Okay. To Julius, okay. Right. I haven't given him an official apology, so I will because I went in on Julius <laughs> that his first season here. Yo, me too. I'm you and me both, bro. Right? So, so did it. So Yo, the takes I had. See, I didn't even know that this world was a thing yet. So yeah, the yeah. takes I had with my friends and like at the games. You needed to eat their beat mm-hmm. behind it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I will say, Julius, I apologize. I, you know, listen, any I, you understand that we didn't, we because I know they yeah. listen to it, right? So, yeah. so I'm yes. talking straight to you, Julius. Yes. I know you listen, and I know you understood why we went on on you the first season, right? I just want to say I apologize, and thank you for making last year one of the best years to be a Knicks fan. I will say that. Playoffs aside, thank you for making last year one of the best years. Um, at the same time, uh, Julius, man, like I, I think he's what he's done over a season period, man. Yo, it, it was it was astonishing to see, and you know? he he improved in every area. Everything. He improved with just you know being the player that uh, that can be a two or number three option for a a winning team, Mm -hmm. you know? And I I love that about him. I love the fact that he took the challenge. He went in, he understood where the backlash came from, from his first season. He didn't just take that and say, you know what? Screw you guys. And and, and let it beat him up. No, he went to work over the off season last year and he came back and he brought us to a fourth seed and I'm, I'm forever. He's forever in my heart because of that. And I think this season, what I'm really excited to see in, in Julius Randle is more of that playmaking ability. Now that he's finally playing with guys around him that can all give something on the offensive end. You know, like, I loved Reggie again, but all he w- you know, if, if yeah. Reggie's not wide open, it's but it's but so much you're getting from him on the offensive end. And then you're playing with a point guard, he who must not be named, that did nothing for you on that mm-hmm. on that end. Mm-hmm. So the fact that, you know, I think, like I said, it's an understatement about what good point guards will do for everybody on his team. Yeah. From the RJs, from the Mitches, and, and most importantly for Julius, man. I love the fact, you know, I was, I talked to Alex about this. I was worried about getting a point guard that Julius wouldn't trust. Right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm, I wasn't sure if Julius would trust a guy like Lonzo Ball. I think he would. Schroeder. He would have still looked at it like, "Yeah, it's my team. I'm not. I'm not allowing you to get the, to to take over. I'm yeah. not allowing you to be the center of of the offense or even the defense." I lo- I think Kimball Walker was the perfect Julius Randle, mm. the perfect guy that can keep him at bay because sometimes Julius is. You know, he's the, the energy. Yeah, the yeah. energy gets him right. And I, I there's times where I sat courtside and I'm staring at Julius, and yo, his he looks like his heart is beating out of his chest because of the energy the Garden brings. Oh man, playoffs was it's never more apparent, bro. As I've never experienced anything like that. I've been going to Nick games for almost ten years. Mm-hmm. A guy like Kimba Walker will calm that down for him, Absolutely. and he will trust him enough to say, 
I got you. Do your thing. I'm going to bring what I brought to the team last year, but now I, I trust the guys that that are running the you know running the routes with me. And yeah, I just think for me, I don't think Julius needs to do anything but be himself this year. Breathe. You've had a playoff series now. Finally, out of all these years in your in the league, you've had a playoff series. You've seen what it was about. You see what it is to be in a Nick, you know, in a Nick in a Madison Square Garden while it's rocking. You've seen all these things. You've seen what it was to be the best player on the team. Now take a moment, breathe, and now bring us to that next level. And I'm I'm just happy to you know to see what he does this season. I don't know if it's any tangible thing I can say. I want to see you know Julius do different this year. I just want him to be able to play his game, and 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 without the the weight of the whole team on his shoulders. Now you got some sidekicks. Now let's go to work. Yeah, where are you at on, yeah. on Julius? I agree with Julito. I, there, yeah. There's not much I really am asking for. Randall to like come in here with and just change his game. I want him to play the same game that he did last season because it worked. It worked not only for him, but it also worked for the team. So don't break with, don't fix what's not broken. Mm-hmm. So come in, do the same thing that you do. You know, Julito pointed it out. Like he was anxious during the playoffs. Like he didn't have that experience. Some guys, when they never have that experience, like their senses just get heightened to a level where it's just like you're, you're in your own head. You just can't perform. But then after that one playoff series that you had, they come back in the next season like, I know what this is like now. I know that it's a slower game. I know we're going to be playing a lot more half court. I also think that when you watch Randall last season, he was legitimately the only guy that was scoring for us. Yeah. Right? Not just the playoffs. Like, he didn't do it. He didn't show it in the playoffs. But throughout the regular season, like, he was the guy. Like, we relied on him every single night. So it was on him again in the playoffs, being the sole creator not only for himself but for the offense to say all right this is all on you now you're the point forward go do it he he hasn't he was only a point forward for one season and that was under david fisdale and a little bit of mike miller and that wasn't enough to even get his like his bearings to be to understand what a point forward is mm-hmm. now he gets a point guard in kemba walker you have derrick rose i don't think derrick rose is the guy that you necessarily want him to play with because both of them need the ball in their hands all the time i think kemba walker as Julio has mentioned on this on this uh, on tonight's show so many times, Kemba like around the league is known as like one of the best guys, one of the best locker room guys. Like mm-hmm. everyone loves Kemba Walker. Whatever team he goes with to, they just love him. Mm-hmm. Like if he stayed at OKC, they would have loved him at OKC. They loved him in Boston. They loved him in Charlotte. We're gonna love him not only because he's from New York, but because of just his personality. And mm-hmm. you know, as Julio also mentioned earlier, like he there's nights where he can take a back seat and say, "All right, man, go cook." He'll let Julius cook. He doesn't need the ball all the time. And I think understand that he's injured, that he's getting he's that point of his career where he's going to be that mentor, a leader. You know, he's still gonna give you buckets, but he's gonna organize the offense. He's gonna do those things and just take that pressure off Julius, so Julius doesn't have to do it every single night. And also for Julius, like he's got Evan Fournier, who can also do some playmaking. R.J. Yeah. Barrett, if R.J. Barrett takes another step forward this season, he should be able to do a little bit more playmaking that we saw. You know, not just giving Mitch uh, the Gotham mob, but also finding other guys. And we saw there was there were nights that R.J. did it last season. Mm-hmm, there were mm-hmm. like where he would just find guys. So I think for Randall this season, as long as he plays his game, knowing that he's now got the team around him that he needed, he has the shooters. Mitch is going to grab help him grab the boards. I think he's ready to go for this season. We're going to see a more relaxed and more ready Julius than what we did last season. 